From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up, Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hunchavandi and Corey Clark. The host. What is Welcome up, everybody? Host. You I'm are now Aslan. in the host room He's and Corey. can manage your calls from the phone the line started up. Web it's the last show of the year, 2020, man. We survived it. Knock on, knock on wood. We got this one show to get through. Corey, how are you, man? I'm good, buddy. Do I look all right? I'm a little too shadowy, or is it all right? You know, I'm not using the fancy camera because the last time I did, it really made me look even pastier than I actually am. Uh, but now I feel like I might be a little too dark. But either way, you guys know what I look like. It's glorious. You're listening to people on Twitter again. Stop it, man. You look fine. You look fine. But yeah, you look good. You look a little. A little shadowy, but what are you going to do? You just have those, those, the, that, that strong brow ridge, you know, that creates the, the shadows on this beautiful yeah. eye. Of you. Light off coming off the dome. Yeah, yeah. Wake Up War Champ presented by Zaxby's. It is indescribably good. Check out all the great locations around Tallahassee as well as Thomasville, Georgia, Douglas, Georgia. And, hey, the Panhandle's got some love, too, with Mariana, Florida having a location as well. Warchant.com, your ultimate symbol sports source, promo code at the bottom of your screen. All right, so we're just going to kind of uh, – Cruising to the new year, Corey. Hopefully, we'll get to see Florida lose to Oklahoma here shortly. Folks listening to this on the podcast, hopefully, we'll be celebrating it as they go into uh, their final work day of uh, the year. You watch the Mayo Bowl at all? Uh, I watched uh, like a couple drives of it. I think I saw one of the Wake Forest interceptions. Uh, oh, yeah. My man struggled a little bit there um, after those first couple drives. Looks like Wisconsin got it figured out. Wisconsin, actually, their D.C. was uh, – on the short list to be Willie Taggart's DC uh, when he took over. I wonder how if things would have shaken out any differently if they had hired, uh, if they'd have been able to get Jim Leonard instead of Harlan Barnett. It's uh, it's one of those questions that we'll always ask ourselves, right, Corey? Yeah. Always wonder. We'll always wonder what if. But uh, Adam Fuller and everybody's happy. Yeah, you know, give him credit, uh, Willie. That is, I guess he he does at least have a pretty good talent eye when it comes to, I guess assistance although i don't know maybe oregon was kind of spoon fed to him but the fact that he he did go after jim leonard got kendall browse um but you know that's the past we're gonna have to focus a little bit on the past though because it is the final show a little bit of exception to that with some of the other people he brought onto his staff that uh have not not exactly climbed their way high up on the ladder of coaching success for jimbo at the end yeah okay all right uh let's go ahead let's grab a phone call um he was not first in line, but I don't care. I make the rules sometimes. Let's go to Virginia Beach, Virginia. Sorry, Mark in Naples. You're coming right up. You're on deck. Let's go to Gator Kirk, mayor of the 757. What's going on, G? Hey, what's up? What's up, guys? Happy New Year in a couple days. Let's go. Welcome to the pickleball world. Yeah. Thanks. There, Aslan. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Good to be here. Good to be here. What's going on, man? How you doing? Two weeks without you in my life. It's it's It feels so odd. It feels so foreign, man. Hope you're well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, things are uh, things are going good. Things are going good. Um, you know, had, had a little Christmas Eve scare there, but everything's good. How, how did you like that pickleball experience? It was pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. I, mean, I just got done playing tennis against Ira. Uh, he took me down per usual, so I kind of want to use a little bit of excuses that I lost my tennis game playing pickleball. But uh, it was good. It was it was quite vigorous. I enjoyed it, man. Anybody can play. We have to next time you're down here in Tallahassee, Corey. We're, it's on. We're playing pickleball? Yeah, a little bit. You know, we'll mix it in. That sounds great. Oh, you're so stoked. It's, right, it's, a, it's a lot less work. It's a lot less work than tennis, and it's a whole bunch of fun. There you go. Uh, All right. You sold me. All right. Maybe you'll be a little more stoked for Gator Kirk's question, man. What's on your mind, G? Um, I want to – I really want to know, um, do we have more of a need at linebacker or offensive line? Linebacker. Thanks for the call. Have a great New Year. Gator Kirk, everybody. Virginia Beach, Virginia. Um, absolutely, linebacker. I like the offensive line. They're okay. I mean, I, I'm not in love with them, but Corey, they're okay. The linebacker core, I don't I don't know what positive really adjectives you can use. Yeah, no, they're – look, they the the correct answer is yes, like both. They need both. A lot of they need they need to stock up on good players. I think going into next season, you feel more comfortable with the linebackers because I'm sorry, with the offensive line because of the experience and the fact that they did get better. I, I don't know that we could look at those linebackers other than Emmett Rice. I guess Amari Gaynor. I, I still kind of 
what, what do we call it? Is he a stud? Is he a fox? Whatever Amari Gaynor is, a hunk. Um, uh, what, I don't really consider him part of the linebackers I'm talking about. But Dix, Lundy, Deloach, um, none of them, none of them really wowed you, did they at all? They, none of them did anything great. Dix was probably the best of the bunch, but that's not saying much at all. He's a freshman, but I just feel like going into next season, and we don't even know if Emmett Rice is coming back. But going into next season, we have a much more strong. We have a we have a we know we have much more of a knowing feeling about what the offensive line is and what it can be. The linebackers, I mean, they were porous this year, and they didn't seem to get much better. So if they could get a couple guys that can play immediately, um, I think you probably say you need that a little bit more. But you always need offensive linemen, man. Always, always. Mm. I have a – my other thing is, is didn't, didn't Dillingham or someone say right after Norvell was hired he was going to be the fullback's coach? But I don't remember us recruiting a fullback or having a fullback, or is that just some shade they're throwing towards everyone? I don't remember them. I don't remember them. I, I know they're. I know they're pro style with tempo or whatever. But I never remember them talking about fullback in particular. He might have been. He might have been joking. Like they don't have a fullback in the system, so he'll be the fullbacks coach. Um, but I, you know, I, you know, they the, the only fullback I can really remember them using is Lundy on the goal line. Um, so I think that shows you what they think of like the importance of that position <clears throat> in the in. In the in the vein of a normal fullback like Edgar Bennett or William Floyd or all those guys, they don't they don't do that. So you know, I think they feel Preston Daniel and DJ Lundy and maybe the Jordan Wilson kid when he's healthy next year, they'll fill that role of being a lead blocker if they have to be. But they don't do a lot of well, they don't do any real eye formation except when they're on the goal line or lead blockers. I should say they don't do any lead blocker really except when they're on the goal line. So that might they just might like Lundy in that role. He was actually. He's better at that than he was at playing linebacker this year. No, no offense, DJ. You're young, but uh, he he was pretty good in that role. I thought. There you go, G. That's what we think, man. All right, I want to thank you guys for a great year and everything that you all have done for the Knoll Nation and keeping it upbeat as much as we could. Everyone, hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you eat at Zaxby's. If you're not a member of War Chant, you're actually missing the um, re recruiting chat on the recruiting board right now with Michael Langston. You still got time to get, probably get your question in and get it answered. Even if you don't get it in tonight, he'll answer it some other time. He always does. And as always, go Knowles. Happy New Year. Looking forward to 2021. Let's go. Gator Kirk, Virginia Beach, Virginia. A staple of the program, man. Thanks for the call. We appreciate it. Happy New Year, buddy. We appreciate it, man. Uh, let's take a phone call in a second. But first, uh, check out In the Wind. Getting us started right here. Get a little, a little bit of that for you, everybody. 20 bucks in the jar, starting our new year off on a good note. Appreciate you. Says what's going on, guys. Let's get this chat going. Hashtag Horn Gang. Happy New Year. He did comment later on saying that uh, for him, O-line, so critical right now. So I guess he's uh, O-line over linebackers. You're wrong. It always, yeah, it always is. Thank you very much for the for the tip. That's awesome, man, for real. Um, our lady, I guess we don't know for sure that in the win is a man. Um, it could be a woman. Um, or a child. Uh, we don't know. Some some kids have money, but uh, you, you always need you always need O linemen. You got to stack up O linemen. I think the theory though is that not only did they get better this year, but they're so young. Like they have three out of the six main guys. I think they think are that, that will be moving forward. Maurice Smith, Trader, uh, help me out, Aslan. Robert Scott, Devontae. Scott. Scott. Yeah, yeah. Scott. They're they're going to be freshmen again next year. And so you've got three, they, and they really like all three of those guys. So you've got three anchors. So you feel pretty good. And Lucas, I guess, is still technically a sophomore. Um, so yeah. So I, I think they, but yeah, you've always got to stack up a line, man. You've got to get, you've got to get better at that position. You got to get more numbers at that position. They can play. No offense to some other guys. I'm not going to name their names, but there are guys on this roster right now at offensive line that has been proven over the last couple of years because of their inability to even get on the field that they can't play. So hopefully you can add some numbers to that and make the lot, make the uh, position room better. Okay. All right. Well said. Um, speaking of well said, let's go to the uh, always uh, well articulated and uh, interesting Mark from Napoli, Naples down there, Southwest Florida. Mark, what's going on, man? Happy New Year to you and yours soon enough. Uh, happy New Year, boys. Um, 
man, it's been a crazy year, but um, thank you for doing this. I'm just, I'm kind of bummed that this is the last, uh, last show. Can, 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 can I respectfully request that this continues into 2021, these live shows? They're awesome. We'll see. All right. Hey, you can request all you want, buddy. We'll see. No, of course. Yeah, I, I think we're going to continue to do them. I think they might be more sporadic than every week just because it's not football season. But we might have a company-wide meeting and uh, decide to do these more often uh, or do these as often uh, moving forward. But, yeah, they're not they're not really going anywhere necessarily. Um, they might just not be as frequent. But we're, we're going to – hey, we're going to be here. We're going to be – we're not going anywhere. We made it. We made it in 2021. I will add – I don't want to jinx it. It's still December 30th. Yeah. Corey, what kind of golf stuff did Stephanie get you? So she got me a uh, chipping good? Uh, Yeah, she got me a chipping net because the only thing I really like to do is chip. I'm terrible. I have a terrible swing, so I'm a terrible driver. Uh, I like to putt okay, but the only thing I'm actually kind of decent at is chipping and, and pitching. So she got me a, uh, I don't know what you call it, like a turf mat where I can chip off of, and then she got me a chipping net. Uh, and it, well, and she also got me the AirPods, not these, these are old, but she got me AirPods too. But those were my, those were my two golfing things that she got me. That's awesome. I got her, I got her a driver cover that is a go. Know that. Go ahead, Mark. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I'll just keep it brief. I appreciate you guys. Um, I posted something on the tribal council today. Like a lot of people are saying that the 2021 is still, you know, with our schedule is, is bleak. Um, and, and, you know, we have like a five or six, uh, win ceiling. I just totally disagree. I, I think that the, the addition of Mackenzie Milton can't be overstated. Um, I know that, you know, he's going to, I think he's going to make the wide receivers that are young and our team better. And these guys are still coming back from injury and our, our, our running game was, was freaking awesome. Um, you know, especially in the, in the later half of the season. So, I mean, I'm not asking you to like make predictions on wins. And I know Corey, you went on record saying like, I'm never going to do that again. And, and, <laughs> Correct. And wins, whatever. But I, I, I think that, I, I think that the, uh, you know, the defensive side, you know, we got that UGA transfer um, uh, who who's has more sacks individually than practically our whole roster this year. So I, I'm, I'm trying to be, you know, a little optimistic. I, I don't know if you guys agree if you think that uh, 2021 could be a pleasant surprise and, and a lot more fun for us. Yeah, I would say the one thing I would, would uh, kind of counter with there is I do think, man, the running game was helped so much by the quarterback, and he changed everything in the running game. I don't know if the, you go to a more traditionally uh, traditional quarterback in the sense that, I don't know if he's 5'11", and he can move, but he's not Jordan Travis. So that's, the running game won't be running for 250 yards, I don't believe. But maybe I might be wrong. It's another year in the system. The line's better. The running backs will have been here for another year. So, um, you know, there's a chance. I just think we can't, again, talking about overstating, I don't know that we can overstate what Jordan Travis's impact on the running game was. And, yeah, man, I just – I would I want to jump on board. I want to think that they can win eight or nine games. But, number one, I think I've said that the last two or three years, and I've just been woefully wrong. But also the defense just gives me so much pause, man. Like, you – to beat some of these teams, like the t the games they lost this year, they would have had to score in their 40s to win many of those games or all of those games. Uh, in Miami, you'd have to score 55. And I just don't know that even if the offense will be better, which it should be, that you can count on an offense continually scoring mid-40s to win these games because the defense has to take a pretty sizable step to get to seven or eight or nine wins, in my opinion. I'm not saying it's impossible, but they've got to get so much better. They cannot be – the worst in the conference. You just can't be. So that that's that's my only real hang-up. I do think the offense will be good. Uh, special teams will be good. Defense is horrid. Let's hope they can just become mediocre. If the defense can become mediocre, yeah, I think they can surprise some people, sure. There we go. All right. Yeah. Well said, Corey. I have nothing else yeah. to add to that, Mark. I like everything he said. Hmm. Even-handed. Yeah. Thanks, Aslan. I appreciate that. I mean, geez, even if they're just average um, – an average ACC defense. I was looking at their schedule aside from Clemson, Notre Dame, and Florida. Um, you know, we played what Mass, UMass and Jacksonville state again. So, I mean, it's like, you know, they, they can get it done, but I, I, I appreciate you guys and um, just, just keep it coming. Um, <laughs> happy new year. Love you guys. And we'll talk to you later. Thanks. Mark. All right, man. Thank you, buddy. Happy new year to you too. Thank you Can't very much. 
spring game, spring game, customer cu customer appreciation, man. Be here or be square. Yeah, we'll be there. I'll, I'm driving up from Naples for that, for sure. All right, there we go. Mark awesome. Naples, also known as Matt AMCZ over on the Tribal Council of Warchant.com, man. We appreciate you. Uh, well done, Corey. Thank you for uh, taking that one. I just, Mark really, you know, Mark feels it. Mark loves the Knowles. He lives and dies with the Knowles. I, don't I love that, man. You, you know, like, I wish I was more like Mark. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm a, and maybe it's the Atlanta fandom in me, but I'm just such a pessimist most of the time. Like, oh, here goes nothing. Let's talk, let's keep it close. And I, I wish I could be more, uh, just glass half full about everything, really. Um, so I'm, I'm trying. I'm working at it. I still got time to live and change. I'm not too old to to learn some new tricks. So maybe I'll, maybe that'll be my resolution in 2021. Is just to assume that Atlanta is going to win everything. The Hawks are going to make the playoffs. The Braves will win the World Series. The Falcons are going to get somehow get Trevor Lawrence. I'm just going to start thinking positive, man. It can't, it's not like thinking negative helps me at all. All right. All right. Uh, they're saying Trey Young may be MVP candidate. Well, let's slow down. <laughs> it's three games. Kevin Saldana dropping 20 bucks our way, man. We appreciate you, Kev. Can I call you, Kev? There we go. A little bit of that. How about a little bit of this? Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Linebacker group's going to be fine. Hey, wait. Did you, do that for in the, did, did you do that for in the wind? No, no. I got to mix it up. I can't just do, you know, standard. I can't, you know. So Kevin do. Kevin gives us one more sit, and he gets the whole the, – uh, in the wind even said he was the air horn gang. I gave him the air horn. Oh, I didn't hear. That's why I was asking if you gave him the air horn. Yeah, of course, man. Come on. Sorry, my fault. I, that was a rude interruption. Go ahead, Aslan. You're on it. Uh, Nom, there's rules, man. Uh, Kevin Saldana feels good about the linebackers because Tyler Grubbs, once he gets here, <laughs> yeah. watch out. But By the way, so I haven't gotten it. So I don't – obviously, who watches Louisiana Tech football? Nobody. But they were on – who were they playing? Georgia Southern, I think. So I'm like, you know what? I haven't watched a second of this kid play. I'm not even sure what number he is. Let me look that up before this game starts, and I'm going to pay attention to the middle linebacker for Louisiana Tech just to see what it looks like, just to see if I was whistling Dixie and he's, at, he's, he's not really that good. Man, I am telling you, in the first seven plays, he had four tackles and a pass breakup, and he was, like, he was attacking the line of scrimmage. Like he was diagnosing quickly and ripping, going. And I was like, man, they have not had a linebacker like that here, it seems like, since Telvin Smith. Now, I also saw – so he would, they still gave up a touchdown that first drive. So then I go outside and live my life because who's got time to watch Louisiana Tech and Georgia Southern? I come back in the third quarter, and I watch another drive, and he's picking all the wrong holes. He didn't get outside – he didn't get outside where he was supposed to be, and they gave, oh, gave – oh. part of the reason they gave up a 45-yard run. But then I look at the end of the – so I was like, oh, okay, maybe I need to peel back. But I looked at the end of the game. He had 12 tackles and a sack and a pass breakup. I mean, that's a solid outing, right? My man makes plays. So, Grubbs. And all, I, I don't, I'm not trying to be rude. Nobody will ever know your name if you stay at Louisiana Tech. The only, I don't even think Louisiana – I think there's more Florida State fans that know your name now because of this show than all Louisiana Tech fans in the world. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do. Do you want to just toil in obscurity in Ruston, Louisiana? Or do you want to come play big boy football and get taught by Chris Marv and get to play behind – the likes of Robert Cooper and uh, Jermaine Johnson. Come on, man. The time's now. You can come without any penalty. You can come make plays. I promise you there's playing time to be had. Anyway, you go ahead with the question. I was going to take a phone call, but this is a good segue because you did mention uh, Jermaine Johnson and Redbeard's in the house. Redbeard throwing 50 American our way. <laughs> uh, Happy New Year's, he says. Are we getting... Mackenzie Milton and Jermaine Johnson because Mike Norvell is killing it or because we are the best option. Does that make sense? Well, look, uh, so you knew that KZ was McKenzie? Yeah. yeah. Is that his nickname? Is that what we have to call him, KZ? No, I mean, I'm not. He's not my friend. By the way, uh, who was the guy that uh, just donated? I the one that was Kevin talking about. Come on, man. Ke Kevin's KS. Sorry, Kevin. I apologize. Uh, my, my, my memory's going. He also asked if they can move Notre Dame out of the first game next year. They should oh. do anything possible to do that. They probably can't. The ACC probably has something to say there, but, man, what a nightmare. That's going to be six straight uh, season opening losses, most I likely. Heard, they're, they're losing a bunch of people. There's going to be a lot of churn on that roster, man. Fresh team, Doak, yeah. Doak okay. rocking with 35,000 people, you know. It, could be, it might be 80 by then, 
we're talking about September, buddy. We're talking about September. It might be eighty thousand. It might be completely full. So they probably, yeah. Notre Dame is losing a lot, but still, they're they're going to be pretty good, probably. Um, so he's asking if they're getting McKenzie and Johnson because Norvell is killing it, or because they're the best option. So I guess it's it's brand versus like his yeah. personal charisma. I think um, I think for both, it's playing time um, at a at a brand school is how I would say it. I, I think I don't know how many options – like who out there that has the brand name recognition of Florida State could McKenzie Milton go to where it would like matter? Um, you know that, that that he knows that he has a very good chance to start. Like he can't go to Georgia. Uh, I don't know about what Alabama's got. He's Why got Florida. I mean, Florida's going to probably lose Trask. Uh, yeah, but then they got the they got Emory Jones, who they've been yeah, but he hasn't, yeah, I don't know. That yeah, I mean it's I think the fact that with McKenzie Milton he had played against that Memphis offense. Now obviously he didn't went on the field, but he was on the sideline watching it and he knew he had to score 60 points to win. I think that said that was a lot of the reason he wanted to come because he saw it up close and personal what it looks like when it's humming. And he's like, Yeah, I can play, I can be a part of that offense. I can be who was the kid? Riley, something Riley from Memphis. Riley Ferguson. Yeah, that played there a couple of years ago. Um, so yeah, as for Jermaine Johnson, um, man, I just think that's a I, I think that's a brand thing. And obviously it's a trying to get to the NFL thing. And I know I can play right away. That but yeah, I, I think both can be both answers to that can be yes. I think Norvell's doing a good job of selling his vision, selling the program selling the iconic brand, right, Aslan? It's an iconic brand. Um, but also Florida State is a very good option for both those guys. I'm not trying to be a smart aleck here. I, I do wonder what he saw from at, like the whatever Adam Fuller runs schematically that he – because I, I don't know, man. Like did J-Rob and, and Kando, were they firing off the line every time, like chasing the quarterback, and they just couldn't get there? And he's like, okay, I could do, I can beat these tackles. Yeah, maybe. maybe he like he slows it down and go like, look, like now imagine somebody that's can move, that's athletic in that spot. Like imagine him being able to, you know, somebody that can actually run around a tackle. Yeah. Think about how we can use you in that in that uh, situation there. Yeah, I think you could do something like that. Like, don't judge us that we only had nine sacks, Jermaine. We didn't have you, buddy. We didn't have you. If we had you, we'd had twenty sacks, but we only had nine because we didn't have defensive ends that could uh, could move real well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, it's a good thing. I mean, uh, no matter how good this brand is, and no matter how long it sustains, they still have to make a pitch to these kids. I mean, they and these kids, you know, they, they're not 18 years old. I mean, they've played on winning football teams. They played for really good programs. You know, Mike Norvell had to come across as, you know, pretty articulate and pretty. Uh, you know, clear and clarity of thought of what he wants to do and how they, he can use those guys because a lot of programs want those two guys. I, I, no matter what happened with Mackenzie Milton, I still I, I find it hard to believe that nobody else is knocking on his door. So uh, they've been pitched before. They they know what, what winning programs look like, and there's something they see that they feel like uh, at least individually can help them. And, again, if, they're, if they play well as individuals, if Jermaine Johnson goes out and gets 12 and a half sacks, if Mackenzie Milton throws for 4,000 yards and 30 touchdowns, this team is going to be considerably better than they were last year. Yeah, if he throws for 4,000 yards, absolutely. Yeah. That was something. I don't know, 30, How many I mean, touchdowns did they throw for this year? Like seven? I don't know, like 3,200 yards. I don't want to. I mean, no, I'm saying I, if it could be 4,000, I'm not, I, I was just saying that would be incredible. That would be awesome. Yeah. That'd be fun to watch yeah. again. Right. Fun to watch a Florida State football team again. There we go. Let's take a phone call from a, a staple of the program. Jay from Daytona Beach, man. What's going down, Jay? 12 and a half sacks. I don't think we had that this year, man. Nope. <laughs> had nine. They had nine this year, Jay. They had nine sacks, gave up 29 and had nine. By the way, so you got to be pretty happy with what's going on uh, so far on the tra in the transfer portal. I got a couple big-ish names. Yeah, Jay, you're, you're all about the portal, man. Yeah, guys, I just want us to continue to be proactive, man, instead of reactive. So that's my wish for this new year. Okay. Okay. They are. Keep it going. They're being proactive. They are. What's on your mind? They need a few more, though. We can all agree on that. They better not just stop it, too. <laughs> they better have some more coming. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just basically want to call and congratulate you guys for, you know, having a great year, um, success of the show. Um, as far as the linebackers go, man, I'm still like McCray and Glenn and those guys, they got to, I mean, 
those guys got to have something in them, man. I, I'm, it's kind of mysterious why those we haven't seen those guys more. Like, I, I know we got something in that linebacker room. Like, do you guys disagree with that? Or I, I mean, I, it's McCray to me is the biggest mystery of all of them. Like, he was a playmaker in the spring. Um, they all they couldn't stop talking about him his first spring. Like, wow, a guy that's going to really surprise you is Jaleel McCray. And we don't we don't think Willie Taggart did a great job here at Florida State, but he knows football talent. It, you know, he 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 can d- discern who is a good player and who isn't, and he was really talking him up. And then I think he had a pick in the spring game, or almost had one, and was all around the was all over the place. And you're like, yeah, man, this guy's the real deal. And it's been basically crickets for two years. Um, and it's maybe I don't even see. I think he's been here two years, and it's just like, how is he with what with what they've had? How is he not getting on the field? And that's what. With, with, and it's not it's not like you can say, well, this one coach didn't like him. He's had two coaches now. They wouldn't play him, and you just wonder why. Like, what, 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 what was lost in translation from that first spring when he was the star of the spring until now? Where I, you know, I know he changed numbers this year, but I didn't even remember he what his. I don't even know what his number was because he wasn't ever on the field. I think it was fourteen, maybe yeah, fourteen. Yeah, he was yeah, fourteen. Who, who would know that? Yeah. So yeah, you, you wonder, Jay. Right? Like they, these guys were pretty. Uh, a couple of me. The Glenn was pretty highly sought coming out of high school. Um, you know, Dix and, and, and Lundy, and, and you got McCray, you got guys in there. But I just get concerned when we're, we're going into a third year. And I know Jimbo used to always say, everybody's in too much of a rush. Let them grow. Let them develop. Um, you always want them to be stars as soon as they get here. And sometimes it takes a while. But by year three, by, year, by the end of year two, or by the beginning of year three, if you're not like in the mix, if you're not getting on the field, it's like, man, okay, well, that and you're, you've had two different coaches kind of make that determination that you're not good enough, uh, at least right now, to play. It, it makes you wonder that maybe it's never going to happen. But, you know, I, I can't imagine they're all busts. There's got to be some talent in that room. There's got to be some talent in that position. So I hear you, man. I hope you hope it just takes a big step. But why aren't they seeing the field, though? That's that's the thing, though, Corey, right? I mean, we all yeah. see the same stuff that Adam Fuller is seeing. If he thought that Jaleel McRae or Kevon Glenn was a better option than Emmett Rice or Leonard Warner, I mean, he would put them out there. It, it, they weren't even experimenting with these guys. I mean, that, that's how yeah. removed they are. And I remember when McRae did finally crack the two deep, I remember asking Adam Fuller about, like, oh, hey, you know, uh, what's he showing you to earn the opportunity? And he pretty, pretty much was like, we have nobody, you know, it, it, was, it, it was, it was like by necessity. It wasn't as though he had turned some sort of corner. I, I'm more curious about McCray because of what you said. He looked good in the spring of 19. He went to IMG. Uh, I mean, Kevon Glenn, I think like app state was maybe like the only other place that he was oh, okay. his uh, recruiting profile. Um, you know, so, and he comes from a program Dutch town that I've never really heard uh, that much from producing a lot of talent, but you know, Again, McCray being a guy that is from New Smyrna Beach, went to IMG. You figured he'd be a guy that could uh, contribute, but maybe you know a year in the in the the strength and conditioning program, maybe stronger and, and you know is able to diagnose stuff and gets a, a shot at it. But uh, they have bodies at linebacker. That that was a huge thing they didn't have. That Willie went and got a whole bunch of guys, uh, but none of them have panned out so far. So, well, hey, listen, guys. Uh, Corey asked me about the transfers. I will say I'm very happy with the amount of attrition that's taking place and the particular individuals. But I just got one request for you guys. Uh, and maybe you guys can ask Gene about this next year. Let's see if we can bring back the, uh, what is it? The, the happy hour okay. at least once a month on Friday okay. for 2021. Okay. Absolutely. We'll do that. Well, I'll get drunk. I'll let everybody watch me. get drunk. Well, Let me pull back the curtain real quick. Here's the thing though, Jay, and this is not me complaining. We, we work Sunday. We cover the game Saturday. We do the podcast Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We're, we're covering everything. We do War Chain Report. Like Friday for us is pretty much like during football season, like the only day that we don't, don't have say to. It. Don't say it. Going, well, I'm just saying uh, that, that's why we don't have them as often, but you like it. Let's do it for the off season. For uh, the off season. Okay. Absolutely. I'm with you, man. We could do it uh, every every other week or something. We could do a happy hour, as long. It's not like we're doing anything. Oh, it's not that we don't love you. Just I'm just saying. You know, sometimes we need some we need some me time or whatever. So, um, Jay, would you want to be the Turk? Like, would you want to be the guy that went around and told guys like, "Hey, you, it's over. Handing in your playbook. Get in the portal." Like, are you that? Are you are you that guy? You got that that fire in you? Because there's some people that are really happy about the attrition. They love it. I think people are more excited to see guys leaving than they are to see names on Michael Langston's hot board that might be coming. Like, people get stoked when guys leave. Yes. 
<laughs> well said, Jay. Well said. said. All right, Jay. We appreciate the phone call, man, and, uh, and the compliments, man. Thanks for uh, calling in and being part of the show all year long. Addition by subtraction. Go no. There we go. All right, man. Absolutely. Happy Trump New Year, Jay. Trump. Thank you, buddy. Uh, we appreciate you, man. All right, let me uh, let me get to this real quick, Corey. Uh, part of uh, what we have to do here on the program every now and then, talk a little bit about uh, the people that help power us and uh, help keep us going. But I'm not even going to have to say anything. You're really not going to even have to say anything because I'm just going to uh, read what's on the screen here from BC Knoll 16. They used to be around quite often, but they've uh, they've fallen off here. They said they can't call in today, uh, but they wanted to help us out with their Hello Fresh review to support the sponsorship. Says that uh, the wife and I, and as you can see on your screen right there, that apparently is the wife, very attractive young lady. Well Good done. work. Good Good work, BC. Uh, says, my wife and I uh, have been getting Hello Fresh for a couple of years now. We absolutely love it. We started out getting it once a month, then it went to every other week. Now we get it every week. Not only are the meals easy and delicious, they also teach you things such as how to properly cook something, temperature, time, and how and when to use certain ingredients. This is really true. I, I used to think I could cook, but I really can't, and I don't have a lot of flavor profiles in my bag, but I've learned mm. a few things with this. And I think especially too, like if you have, the, if you have a lady or if you have a guy, uh, you know, this is like a, a good date night thing. You, just, you all can cook, you can contribute, although Corey probably just sat in the living room and Watch TV while Steph slaved over the stove. But uh, anyhow, back to BC Mall 16. HelloFresh also has the best customer yeah, service of any company I know. If by chance any ingredients are missing, they will refund the entire meal. No questions asked. If the shrimp and chorizo paella is on the list of meals to choose from, I highly recommend trying it. So that's what that's BC Mall 16 says. Go to HelloFresh.com forward slash wake up 10. You'll get 10 free meals and free shipping. 10 free meals and shipping free of charge. HelloFresh.com forward slash wake up 10. BC Knoll 16 is also uh, vouching for it. He can't be wrong. What a testimony that was. Hey. Was better than anything we could have done. I was just yammering around yesterday talking about it. It was really good, but I didn't do nearly the job that uh, I should probably have Stephanie come on and actually talk about it since she was the one that prepared the meal. Yeah. All right. Let's get back to all, all of our good friends here on YouTube. Thanks for uh, hanging with us. I don't do the show for two weeks. I almost forget that, uh, you know, all these things that are going on behind the scenes that I got to get people involved. Uh, as in the wind does say 165 people watching. We're up to 252 right now. Only come on more likes, thumbs up. Everybody would appreciate it. Here we go, man. We can't end the year without one of the, maybe the OG pillar, James B. One hundo. Let's go, man. Come on. Straight cash, homie. <laughs> ah! Let's go. James B., I appreciate you, man. Um, we had a little back and forth on YouTube. There's something he, he doesn't like when, when we call these uh, these players kids. Like, yeah. I, I felt bad. Like, I feel bad for five star Johnny who doesn't get to fulfill his life goal of being a professional athlete. Like, I, I feel bad when it happens to these kids. But then he reminds me that these kids get scholarships and, you know, they're, they're grown men and I shouldn't feel bad. Maybe you're right, James. Maybe you're right. I don't, it's not necessarily that about the scholarship. It's just sometimes when I say kids, I feel like, man, that's really condescending. Like they are, adults. Uh, they are adults. Like I, you know, anybody under 36 to me is a kid, but yeah. you know, they are adults and they can vote. They can go to war. Uh, they can't rent a car though. Explain that one to me. We'll send you overseas to fight for our freedom, but you want this Corsica? No chance. <laughs> you want a Nissan rogue? Uh, -uh. we, we, trust you that's always been bizarre but anyway yeah i can i can say that we we probably shouldn't I, I i call them kids too much yeah it comes from a good place james b hey man we appreciate you thanks so much uh you know absolutely man that's awesome thank you very much building a lot of the momentum that we uh, get to uh, enjoy uh, on this program so we appreciate it last show for a while say it ain't so well, it won't be that long. It was just, it's the last one of the year. I had to kind of, you know, we don't, we, usually it's, there's a game that, you know, everything is kind of predicated on. We didn't have a game to sell this week. Usually so we're know. like in, we're in beautiful locales like Shreveport or El Paso, yeah. so, but yeah. they didn't make a bowl. So we're at home. I, and I'm going to be spending New Year's Eve in the crib, Midtown offices by myself, probably. I would have rather, I was in El Paso last year taking shots with Irish O'Fell. So, yeah. you know, no matter where the party. I was at a party last year at New Year's Eve, a fun one that I I, uh, I I I feel like if I remember correctly, I might have gotten inebriated. And this one, I think I'm going to my mom's house. I haven't well, I haven't been at home 
for New Year's Eve with my mom you know, <laughs> since I was 11. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. Is Dick Clark still doing it? <laughs> who's, who's taking oh, over? Man. Anderson He's Cooper, done. Kathy Griffin. Like, I don't, I don't even yeah. know who does these shows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyhow, James B. says, uh, I feel Keyshawn Hilton uh, will be a lot better in 2021 because he will be another year removed from his injury. That injury can stick in your head a while. What say you guys? I'll be there at the spring game. That's somebody I probably would be more inclined to think is going to make, you know, you either get better or you get worse. You never stay the same. It's what used to hang over the practice field. Um, you know, we're having to really, if you want to be the optimistic guy, you're really having to think a lot of these guys are going to make jumps that we really haven't seen a lot of evidence that there's reason for it other than they're going to be older and you hope that they're stronger and maybe know a little bit more about what they have to do. But Keyshawn is a guy that we saw, you know, flash early in his career. And then that knee injury, he did bounce back from it pretty quickly rehabbing, but I do agree. James is right. I think especially yeah, a year removed from it, uh, I would imagine that we will see a much better Keyshawn help. You hope so. I, I just thought he – DJ Matthews was a bigger loss than I guess we probably realized uh, at that slot position. I kind of I kind of viewed them almost as interchangeable, but they weren't. You know, DJ DJ had a much better 19 than Keyshawn Helton had in 20. Um, and, yeah, I, you know, he, yeah, I, I – just because you believe in the – you I was about to say you believe in the kid, which would have been ironic considering James B's question uh, – but you, you believe in him because of who he is and his work ethic, that he is one of those guys that's going to get better. That's not that's certainly not OK with with how this season went for him or the team. He's a leader. I think he is a guy you should be able to count on for much more production in, in 2021. Yeah, uh, he will be there at the spring game. So uh, there you go. Bring some white claws. Hopefully, James, we appreciate you. Thanks so much, man. Hope you had a Merry Christmas and I hope you have a uh, healthy and happy new year as well as everybody out there. Even if you don't throw money our way. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much, James. Uh, Mark, Mark calls, hangs up the phone, kisses the wife and then grabs his wallet and throws <laughs> money in our face. 150. <laughs> Let's go, man. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. I mean, it's 150 everybody. And I turned down, I think I turned it down enough that it's not as obnoxious quote unquote. People aren't driving off the road when you play it now. Yeah. So uh, thanks, Mark. I mean, come on, man. Good. Don't bring white claws. Seriously, do not do not bring anything. We'll we'll handle it. It's so on I, us. It's yeah. on us, you guys. Happy New Year's. He says, twenty twenty one wake up or chant will be a discussion about winning football again. Let's hold, man. I'm I'm all about it. It's I don't know that we've you and I have never discussed a winning football team, have we? Uh. -uh. uh, -uh. Maybe yeah. they got to five hundred. I don't think that we've ever – we you and I have never talked about a team that had a winning record in football. I think once they beat, like, NC State last year with Willie, they were they three, three and two or something. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. So we got one week to enjoy it of yeah. a 500 hey. football team. Hey, man, you know, we'll take it. We'll take it. Uh, Ray's in the house. Ray says he feels the purge is pretty much done. Whole D-line is gone practically. Uh, Kando, Janaris, Durden, Wilson. Yeah, I do wonder. Like, yeah, the the portal has slowed down in the last day. I mean, that thing was popping the day before and like after Christmas, and it's kind of slowed down. So I do wonder. And, the, and there's less football games being played bowl wise. So you would think these guys kind of know if they're going to stay or leave their their current residence. But um, we'll see, man. Hopefully, uh, hopefully more helps on the way. Let's go ahead. Let's grab a phone call. Uh, it is a call in show after all. Sorry for hanging you folks uh, on the line for that long, but you know how it goes. Uh, let's uh, stay here in Tallahassee. We got Jerry calling in. I think he wants to talk about the defense. How are you, Jerry? Thanks for calling. I'm great. Happy New Year, guys. How are you doing? Great, man. Thank you. Good, man. Happy New Year to you. Fun fact before I get to my question. Actually, I actually used to live across the street from you, fun fact, in the little little small place in, in the Midtown office. So yeah. once in a while, I'd see you and y'all wake up from my car, so. All right, yeah, to chat with you again. Yeah, likewise, man. I, that place is like churning. There's been like three different people that have lived in there since you've left, man. The stability you brought to Levy Park is gone, man. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it's uh, on to bigger and better things. It's a little small, but you know, yeah, it is what it is. I I, uh, I want to hit the theme of the show though with uh, with Adam Fuller. It seems like it keeps getting brought up. And Corey, I know you mentioned, you know, trying to go into 2021 and glass half full. I think that just from a media perspective and just a fan base, maybe, maybe actually a fan base perspective, we've been very negative about what he's brought to the team. And I just think sometimes that's almost 
over overwhelming in the sense of it hasn't been, I mean, production wise, it's been bad, but I don't think it's actually been all that bad. I think there's a lot of positives that you can take from it. I mean, you look at, you look at the team and you look at, you know, they literally didn't have a spring season basically. And that's for the coaches, all the new staff, as well as the players. You know, we, we, Dillingham brought up a big point on the offensive side, like three games in the season. And he was like, you know, we're three games in the season, but it's basically we've had, it's been four scrimmages. Like we're not, we don't have that. And from the defensive side, I think that's also kind of a, a the, the same, you know, thing that we need to look at is, you know, Fuller doesn't make excuses. He really hasn't. He's been very, you know, just kind of sticking to business, but I think he's had a lot to overcome. And I think we, we almost romanticize Norvell and, and the offense because of, you know, the emergence of Jordan Travis, you know, being elite, but, Outside of that, I think, you know, we're seeing some some upgrades there. I mean, from a Notre Dame perspective, when you look at that game, I remember coming out of that game, we were sitting there looking at it and going, wow, they're they're doing the right thing. You know, the guys are in the right position. You know, they're making, you know, they're they're putting the guys in the right position to make, you know, stops in the hole. But, you know, the guy just didn't make a tackle and he busted it for 80 yards. You know, and then at the end of the game, they make a stop and they say, wow, look at the coaching talent. You know, at half at halftime, they obviously pulled, I think it was J-Rob at halftime, you need to set the edge better. And at the end of the game, he did that. So we're seeing, you know, we're definitely seeing coaching being done. And I think the biggest one is North Carolina. So when you look at the North Carolina game, I mean, they changed the team to, to basically take down North Carolina in their attack. And I mean, they literally took a gainer off the field, which they've been praising the entire season. So I think, you know, there's definitely some things they've been doing. You, you see coaching being done, whereas the last two seasons, we really haven't seen that. So I think, you know, ranking wise, they're not doing great. But I also think, you know, we're seeing the coaching being done. It's just the players being there to make plays. And I think that's a big piece of it. So I think, you know, I, I'm curious to see what you guys are thinking. Corey, I want to hear some optimism from you on the defense <laughs> uh, and hear what you guys' thoughts are. Uh, yeah, it should, I, I want to I want to hear it too, man. Jerry, I want to be optimistic. I, I promise. I just – you know, in the you you brought up three like I think the Jacksonville State through really the whole North Carolina game defensively like they gave up yards because that's a dynamic offense, but they didn't give up a bunch. They didn't give up a ton of free yards. North Carolina had to go earn them, and they had to go make plays. And eventually, they didn't make a play, and you won the game because the kid dropped the pass. But what bothered me so much, and I know this is this is more pessimism, is they had that three game stretch: Jacksonville State, Notre Dame, which they played pretty well. They competed. And they competed till the very end, and then the North Carolina game, and then they go and just get eradicated by Louisville's offense. And they didn't do anything to cover their two best players. And that's what not look, they're Atwell and Hawkins were gonna make plays, sure, but it was so easy for them. They made Louisville look like um Alabama offensively, and they're just not. So I do like I, I do like Fuller as a person. I don't know him real well, but the interactions we had. He seems like a nice guy, and I really, really do appreciate and enjoy his press conferences. He's very forward. He's very forthcoming. He tells you what, what he's thinking. Now, it's a lot of it is inside football, but he answers questions, and he, he gives you the truth. Um, I just – I it's going to be hard for him if this thing doesn't get better next year. And, look, that's all I want. I want the I, – I, like I said earlier in the show, I don't want them to be – I know they're not going to be a top-10 defense. I know they're not going to be a top – 35 or 40 defense, but can they make a step where you, where they look better and they play harder? That's all I want to see. And I just, I didn't see enough of that really other than those in the middle of the season, they had some nice moments, but other than that, it was hard. But like we've talked about, like Jay brought up, I do think there's going to be some addition by subtraction. I think the guys on this team next year are probably not going to be as overall as talented as the team he had this year, but I think they're going to be hungrier and on defense. I think that does matter. Obviously, Tyler Grubbs is coming in. Huge pickup. It hadn't happened yet, but obviously, when that happens, that's going to be a huge pickup. But, but overall, yeah, I, 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 I try not to be pessimistic. I really don't. I'm, I'm never going to sit here and say somebody should be fired. But a lot of other people that matter are actually going to start saying that next year if it doesn't get any better. But we all hope it does get better. I agree. You know, and we, we all hope it. We all hope it does get better. What? Go ahead, Jerry. Yeah, and I think I think that I think that's completely fair. I do think that you know we do give an excuse to the offense a lot, like black, the whole Blackman conversation where it was like he had four different coordinators and coaches. I think that really matters on the defense too because they're being taught where to be, what what schemes to play, and things like that. And 
you know, even last year they had two coaches, you know, from behind the scenes, it seemed like Willie Taggart and the DC were completely on different pages, different pages on, you know, what they were supposed to do. So, I mean, I, I feel for some of these guys that, that are going in and they've been taught different things and I can see how, how challenging that would be. And I think without an off season, that was even more challenging. So I think, I think we should really give Fuller that, that benefit yeah. of, the doubt of year zero. But I also agree where if it doesn't turn around and look significantly better where, you know, we are steaming things up, right? I just, I was buoyed by some of the things they did that really did show like in the Notre Dame game, in the North Carolina game. And the North Carolina game, yeah, they blew the lead, but that was on the offense, not moving. Yeah, the absolutely, they, they absolutely. The back, so and I agree with that. And I do, yeah. I, I think this year is a mulligan. I like you called it year zero. Um, you know, we'll we'll know more. Like this is a question that's reserved for November of next year. He will have had what we think will be a normal-ish spring. He will have had a full off season. He'll have had one season that didn't kind of count, where he knows his roster better. Let's see what it looks like next year that he has a real year. We hope we're all hoping that this turns into a real off season and let's see what it looks like and how much better they get from September to November. But like I've said, I mean, no, judging, judging full, like Norvell, it would have been weird for Norvell to judge fuller enough to fire him when Norvell doesn't get judged like that. Like Norvell had all these excuses about, you know, quarterbacks. And like you said, quarterbacks and, and just not getting a full spring and a new offense. Well, Okay, well, I get it. That's a fair excuse. But then you you also you you've got to give your defensive coordinator the same benefit of the doubt. So let's see what next year looks like. If it's anywhere close to as bad as this one was, though, I, I feel like there'll be a change. But let's hey, we that's we're not crossing that bridge, Jerry. We're not crossing that bridge because they're going to be better next year. They can't be worse. Literally, couldn't be worse unless they play with nine guys. They could be. Don't say that. That was we said. There's no way they could be worse than 2019, and they got worse. That we cannot say no, that. No, we cannot no. say that. We just. Can't. <laughs> I will say, as one, I, I'm incredibly buoyed by the fact that they were able to bring in some elite, not elite, but the top talent in the transfer portal on the defensive side, yeah. especially from Georgia. I think that speaks more of a fuller than it was does of Norvell. I think Norvell obviously is a big part of that, but I do that excites me knowing that okay, there's not questions around, at least from the coaching staff and internally around, you know, Fuller. I think that speaks volumes of him. So um, you know, anyways, I really appreciate the time, guys. Thanks for the the feedback and I, I really appreciate the show and have a have a good new year. You too, man. Appreciate you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. I always thought his name was Jeremy. And he was he lived next door to me this whole time. Oh man. Did you just call him J Bone for short? Then you don't have to really Get the name right. I forgot somebody, I forgot somebody pretty much admitting like they call everybody buddy because they don't know. Hey, buddy, what's going on, buddy? Like, oh, know, I'm terrible at names. So I, yeah, yeah, I say, hey, man. Hey, chief. What's up? Every, I every, got that. My New Year's resolution for like nine years running was be more punctual, be better with people's names. And, you know, you know, there's a trick to it uh, that I learned. I don't do it much anymore. But when you meet someone, you shake their hand. And when you're shaking their hand, you say their name. Hey, Jerry, nice to meet you. Gotcha. You've said it, and it's easier to remember. when You you don't say, hey, nice to meet you. I'm Corey. You say, hey, Jerry, nice to meet you. My name is Corey, and then it sticks better. I try to yell it in my head. I'm like, all right, Jerry, 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 and then I'll, I'll you know, I'll have – But I stick with Buddy. I'm like Bowden. I say Buddy a lot. Buddy and Ben. What's up, man? I do that a lot. All right. Uh, let's stick with YouTube. Ed uh, Lemix. So we call him Lemox, and it's Lemix. <laughs> Good with names, Ed. Appreciate you. We got a little bit of that. Great cash, homie. Fifty American our way. Hey, man. Appreciate you, Ed. Man, Ed is the man. Uh, Ed and his wife Courtney, uh, or his wife Courtney rather, said to give you twenty-five that I owed her for the Duke game and add twenty-five more for me. She said we will see you guys at the spring game cookout. Go Knowles. Happy New Year. Let's have a better team. Fingers crossed. Corey, you did. You you told them. You told them to 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 bet on. Florida State to cover against Duke and to hit the over. Shot I had a feeling. Heck. This Florida State team never loses four games in a row. Five <laughs> games, whatever it was. I knew they were, I knew they were gonna come out. I knew they were gonna come out guns a blazing. But thank you very much, Ed. That's that's very nice, man. Thank you very Ed, much. Very, very Courtney, much. thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ed. Uh, you the man. Um, Premier U Theater, 10 bucks. Get you a little bit of this. Thank you. Premier Youth Theater. Hopefully you guys will be back uh, in the thespian world, entertaining and providing arts and culture uh, to the local community in Central Florida soon enough. Happy New Year. PYT. PYT. Yeah. They they tell us Happy New Year's to you as well. 
Who can we expect to contribute in 2021 from the IR list of 2020? Were we? I thought we were we okay injury wise. Did we lose anybody? Well, I mean, as the season went on, they lost seemingly everybody. But uh, um, I'm trying, man. I think I just I mean, 19 was the year of the cart. You know, Woodby got yeah. carted off, and Kando got carted off, and Hamsa and Keyshawn. Uh, I don't remember a lot of that this year. Uh, I think I think Demory Tate. It wasn't an IR. It was uh, oh, Miko Dotson. There we go. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think both those guys, Miko Dotson and Demory Tate, are guys that that should could even improve the secondary. Um, and then, I, man, I just got a feeling, and I don't know why, but I got a feeling about Brian Robinson. Like when I saw him run routes, this his size. I know it was ten months ago or whatever that was uh, that we saw him run routes for three days before it was all shut down, and then didn't really see him again. I just he looked fluid. And he's got some size to him, and I think he's a guy that could make an impact next year too. Um, but yeah, Miko Dotson's probably the right answer. You people, you're here with us live right now. Thumbs up on YouTube. Uh, if there's anybody that we forgot, let us know instead of yelling at your screen. I'm trying to think if there's anybody that we expected to play a lot this year and they never got on the field because they ended up. Chubba Purdy? Hurt. Does Chubba Purdy count? Yeah, I mean certainly, uh, but I, I don't. I don't know how much he's going to contribute with uh, KZ. Yeah, and, uh, Jordan Travis here. But again, that's not a problem. I mean, it's not a big deal because uh, you're not you didn't lose any of your eligibility this year. You sit and watch Milton for this. You know this. Yeah, he's a redshirt year. freshman next year. He'll be yeah. a redshirt freshman. Yeah. I think somebody asked on on YouTube. I can't find it right now. But how much uh, eligibility you get from Milton? I think he's a grad transfer. The best of my knowledge, you, you, you got one year with the guy. It's one year. Yeah, it's one year. He. I mean, he's been in college since uh, I think Bowden was a coach. Uh, so it, he's he's. I think he's 31 years old. Or Whatever he is, what is he? Twenty? We we, we think he's probably twenty four by the time the season starts. Uh, yeah, I think I think, I think yeah. he's right now because it'll be a sixth year. Um, I think sixth or seventh. Year. And here we go. We got into an argument with Ira and a text message. Jordan Wilson. A couple of people saying Jordan Wilson. The That's a good one. I just don't. What, what for? What though? What what did we watch this year that we're like, man? If we had a really good blocking tight end, I mean, well, look, he you know he's a he's a big target. He's a big body, but yeah, you're you're better on the edge. You're but be- imagine Jordan Travis with one extra blocker that's not Cam McDonald. And no offense to Cam McDonald, he's got he's a nice player, but a guy that's is essentially another lineman that's really physical. You need all the physicality you can get, man. Whatever position it is, you need phys- physicality. And that's another one, man. Corey Red, awesome T, yeah, awesome T, awesome t- that's a good one. Um, I the way, the way they talked about him when they signed him. And he was legitimately one of the fastest players in the country. Like not, yeah. not like a fake four four speed. This is a guy that has the track times to prove it. Like a Kenny O'Neill. You remember Kenny O'Neill? Oh yeah, Skyline High School, Oakland. <laughs> he was like a legit uh, hundred meter guy. It was an Olympic hopeful, I think. Um, like Kermit Whitfield. What was Kermit Whitfield's cousin's name? That was also a Marvin Bracy. Yeah, yeah. There you go, Marvin Bracy, who didn't do a. Didn't do a whole lot football wise, but again was an incredible track star. Um, yeah, I just think Corey Wren is a guy that like, where was he? Was he just hurt the whole season? Um, I, I he must have been. I, I just can't imagine that he couldn't get any run in the Duke game if he was healthy. So you get a healthy Corey Wren, you automatically become he's just a guy. I do trust these coaches, and I again I'm certainly not on record that they're turning this thing around and it's going to be another dynasty. But what I saw this year from these coaches, I do trust them to get somebody like Corey Wren the ball in space with a with a chance to do something with it. I just do. I think they will scheme it up enough to get that one on one matchup with a dude that can't cover him because they got he, Preston Daniel. They got they schemed Preston Daniel wide open and yeah, the number five team in the nation. Yeah, uh, they yeah. I mean, if you want to feel optimistic. It all has to center and focus on the offense. I, I'm sorry, Jerry. I can't. I can't. I can't. I, I. I really. I mean, maybe I physically could. I, I mean, I can talk. I can think. I can maybe do something. Thirty seconds of why you feel good about the defense, but the offense. We've seen them call dial up plays, set things up later on within a single game. Within later on in a season, the whole fake toss stuff. I mean, we've seen the offense do things where. I'll never forget, and I think we need to hang on to this, and, and I'm saying it now because I'm in a good mood because we're at the end of the year and everybody's being so generous. Just just remember that three and a half quarters against North Carolina. Remember how fun that was. 
was to see that team march up and down the field at will offensively against a really good team and to play without like fear. I mean, they went out there fearless on both sides of the ball and they were aggressive for two and a half quarters. Cause I mean, they, they started kind of shutting it down there in the, in the second half, which I was kind of fine with um, the offense is what would get you feeling good. And maybe a guy like Corey Wren, maybe Lawrence Toa Feely. I still think, I don't know if, if, if I don't want Jay Sean Corbin to be the best running back on this roster. And that, that sounds like a, a knock on the kid. And I, I can't say that it's not. Um, if Jay Sean Corbin is the best they're going to have at the running back position, I, I think you lack a little bit of home run hitting. He's, I think Toa Feely is that guy. I think, yeah. I, 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 but Corbin certainly has a role. In a, he is, fourth, he and was, one, like, fourth and short, that guy's money. I mean, he, he was he, a great he, short down yard, short yards back. He's. Yeah. Literally, I bet you could go back and look, and they were probably better this year at that than they've been since Wilder was taking handoffs um, or Carlos Williams. I mean, it, it, they had that was an off NFL offensive line in front of my he Deshaun Corbin, and I thought he got better. He got a little quicker as the season went on, like he overcame that injury, or he just he was maybe a little banged up when the season started. He had a little more burst, but man, he, I thought he's real. He just gets you a tough yard, man. You need three yards, he'll plow into you and reach it over and get it by a yard and a half. He did that a ton this season. That is, there. I think they're going to be, they're going to have a, mo- a lot more explosive plays next year, but they're still going to have to have somebody that can get them a, sh- a tough two yards. And it's good to have a dude like that on your roster. Toa Feely, I think, is a lot more, um, you, you know, just elusive and, and maybe more fun to watch just from the wiggle perspective and the big play perspective. But there is certainly a role for Deshaun Corbin, and he seems like a, a really good teammate too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, you want to talk about scheming plays for guys. I mean, those fourth and ones, that was him. That was like individual yeah. effort uh, when stuff wasn't there. Uh, this guy's always been there for us. Let's go. Ray's in the house. Y'all thought Ray wasn't going to, wasn't going to make some noise on New Year's Eve. Eve. Let's go, man. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Ah! Oh, Mike Brain in the house is great. Uh, Ray simply wants to tell us Happy New Year's and thanks for a great year of work, champ. You're welcome, Ray. Thank you, man. For real, Ray. You you had a better year than any of us did. I can promise yeah. that, my man. You were awesome. You're the you're the uh, uh, I mean, probably the MVP of the show. Yeah. Him and James B. I mean, well, look, there's a lot. James yeah. B. Yeah. Mox, there's a lot of great ones out there, guys. It's going to be tough to come up with our end of the year awards that we we uh, we'll, we'll, we do. But uh, yeah, you guys are you guys are all in the mix. What a uh, what a generous bunch! Really, really nice. Yeah, are are they gonna? I wonder if they're gonna have a football banquet, like you know where they do the end like of a year virtual one. I guess. Well, they always have an end of year banquet. Yeah. You know, offensive MVP, defensive MVP. I want to know who defensive MVP is. Who who's the de- who's the defensive MVP, Corey? I mean, Asante probably, but uh, I feel like whoever wins it, don't hang that up anywhere. Don't hang that plaque up. In 16 years, you got you got Pete, you got your boys over for New Year's Eve. Uh, now I'm like, oh, let's look at all these trophies. What's this one? Oh, I was the MVP of the 2020 Florida State defense. Oh, are y'all good? Uh, happy New Year. Like you can answer that. You don't want to explain what happened in 2020. Um, you don't want to be the MVP of that defense, but I you'd have to give it to a, a Sante Samuel. Uh, thank you so much, Ray. Uh, everybody, real recognizing real James B. and a little bit of bang. Uh, Money Man Ray in the wind says so. Uh, we appreciate you again, and you and James B. Kind of some of the guys originally that got some of this momentum going, and everybody else has joined the uh, the craze. It's amazing. We love it. Uh, shout out to Matthew Cash. That's that's the name on the screen. Also, named. There we go, man. A little bit of this. Dollar dollar bills y'all i appreciate you guys thank you again everybody man if you can't throw money it's fine we're all having fun hit the thumbs up if you're enjoying yourself uh, we would appreciate that let's get some phone calls as we wind the show down thank here. you Last matthew time. thank you man that's very nice man happy new year happy new year straight cash straight cash all right let's go to uh cash. let's go to the master of the pit master of the flame barbecue uh, guru chris from perry georgia uh chris was on your mind man I'm going to start calling in a little earlier so I don't have to follow up these big money donations. <laughs> That's right. Jeez. Anyway, uh, I was going to talk about these uh, guys, McClellan, Johnson, guys like that. Um, you know, the SEC guys, and it's, I hate, I hope I've not got any of my friends listening to this that are Georgia fans, but it's probably a good mindset to bring in because these guys are playing tougher football, just some plain facts of it, and they will influence 
the teammates to play tougher football. You know, there they have the opportunity to. Um, so I wonder if Norvell, sorry, I'm going to get on that kick to coach Norvell, is trying to build a um, hard case mentality for the team. You know, the I don't, don't want to say the name, but certain coach Alabama. But I don't know if you guys are uh, seeing some of this stuff behind the scenes as well, that maybe he's trying to be a hard case and get these guys to the league, but he's showing them that, like, coddling is not working. I saw three practices. Corey saw three, and he saw tour duty. You probably saw more uh, tour duty than I, than, than I saw in those three spring practices. He does not look like a fun coach. Yeah, just, he's not a player's coach in that. He's not a player's coach in the sense that he's he's putting his arm around kids, saying, good try, you'll get him next time. It's It's barking. It's not demanding, demanding excellence. It is de- demanding. It's it's a little different than Jimbo. Um, it's not as maybe. Well, it's just different. I don't even need to prepare that, but or compare the two. But no, he is he is a uh, you know hard ass. I don't know how else to say it. He um, and I apologize. You can bleep that out in post, Aslan. Bleep that out. Um, but he he does not take kindly to mistakes. He barks at them. He makes them do it again. He yells at them, and it's nonstop. The volume is is turned up. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't, he's not a player's coach and he's not rainbows and puppy dogs, man. He, he makes them work. He wants them to work. And you are absolutely right about bringing in a kid from Georgia. And I'm not just saying that cause I'm a Georgia grad. I watch those games. They play the, they play that side of the football di- differently there. A lot. You, the talent is different too. We get it, but the talent isn't that different that it, that it, I mean, it looks like they play different sports, the Georgia defense and the Florida state defense. It just does. Those guys arrive angry. It's a it's eleven Telvin Smiths for Georgia. It just is. Now they still give up fifty to Alabama. They're they're not incredible, but overall it's just a different mindset. And absolutely, I wrote a column. When would that have been? Five years ago. Jalen Ramsey's last year at Florida State. I thought because the 2015 defense was so much better than the 14 defense, even though they lost a bunch of NFL guys. And I thought they took their lead from Jalen Ramsey. That kid was just a physical freak, but he also had that mindset that I'm going to bust you in the mouth on every play. If you try to block me, I'm going to throw you into the bench. If I get a chance to tackle someone, I'm going to pick them up and suplex them. And that I do think that permeates that can permeate an entire team. I don't know if a Jermaine Johnson necessarily can have that kind of impact. That He's not Jalen Ramsey. He's not going to be the fourth pick in the draft. But I do think the more of those kind of players you get, that understand what defense and how it's supposed to be played and can bring a mindset like that, that it can't hurt. It just can't hurt to have some of the osmosis that comes from a program like Georgia to seep in to a defense that's been so bad for so long. Get some guys that are mean and nasty and will make plays. I don't want to short sell McClellan either because that guy had to play SEC West every week. So about the Arkansas def- – uh- yeah, I, I don't. I mean, his production yeah. doesn't really matter. I, I, he's like a carbon copy of like a Jarvis Brownlee, which I mean, production wise. Yeah, uh, but again, he had to go up against some beasts. I mean, he had to go up against Devontae yeah. Smith, the AP, AP Offensive Player of the Year. Well, every year, but even last year, he had to cover. Yeah. You know, he probably covered, he'll have ended up covering eight first round picks, eight or nine first round picks in two seasons. So he's gone up against the best. And yeah, same thing. Like, just uh, you know, I'm not gonna. I, I certainly won't compare Arkansas's defense to to Georgia's. But overall, just being around that kind of stuff, man, I just think it helps. I think Mackenzie Milton will have an impact on the offensive side of the ball. Similarly, not because UCF plays this great hard nosed style of football, but because he's used to winning. And I do think that stuff matters, man. I know you can't put you can't break it down scientifically and put data points on it. But that kind of stuff matters, man. The, being around, being from a winning program, being used to winning, I think all of that matters. And you don't accept losing as much. You know what it takes to win, just like you know what it takes to be a good defensive player and get on the field at Georgia. So hopefully all that stuff permeates. Yeah. Well said, Corey. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Yep. Thanks for the question, Chris. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, anyway, last, last thing I had for you guys was uh, – the uh, now I didn't oh, lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, buddy. Hey, we're, you're still on for cooking for everyone, right? When we have the when we have the cookout in the spring. 
yeah, you just got to get a hold of me. We got to get some stuff worked out, some details. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. you're, on. You're, on, you're, on, yeah. you're on the clock. It's a professionally run operation here. Can't you tell? Can't you tell? Yeah, man. Me? Come on. Look how I'm lit. <laughs> Chris well, I'm, from Perry, I'm Georgia. I'm watching this uh, YouTube chat over here, and I'm seeing my pay come in, so I'm cool with it. All right. Right on. All right, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, we got uh, we're over an hour, but we got two. This guy's been waiting for twenty minutes. Apparently, he's a Notre Dame guy. Um, uh -oh. Terry, Terry, if you're listening to us, take no more calls. Terry, uh, we got one more person we'll take after this, and then uh, we're going to shut it down. Uh, but we got uh, the name of my our buddy Coley. Coley's in Iowa. He's a Notre Dame guy. Coley, what's on your mind? I guess Notre Dame, huh? Yeah, yes, sir. God country, Notre Dame. And gentlemen, I've been enjoying your show for quite a while, uh, of course. My question is to you, obviously, Florida State had a, a difficult year. Notre Dame travels and opens up the season with you in Tallahassee at Florida State. What are you expecting or where does Florida State need to improve the most? Is it their offensive line? Is it their defensive line? You've been when you face the in you know nine months from now Coley, so you said you keep up with the show you said you keep up with the show Coley. all we've been talking about is the defense it's the defense Coley. Coley it's yeah it's it, it's it's every level of the defense don't think that like oh they're loaded here and here but they just need some help at linebacker no no it's across the board they've got to get much better uh defensively um, that's that's I think we all think offensively they'll be okay I mean you know they they played Notre Dame pretty well offensively they, they, they put up 400 yards against a pretty good defense against Notre Dame. It's just that, you know, I, I feel like Notre Dame could have scored 65 if they wanted to um, uh, in that game. And they just – it was so easy. You watch that game. It was just simple off-tackle plays where nobody was on that side of the field. And that's the stuff that was too commonplace in 2020. They, they've just got to get better across the board. Um, they have had some transfers that are nice. They should be uh, improvements. But it's it's across the board on that side of the uh, you know they need improvements everywhere obviously we're talking about a, a three and six football team that was two and six against FBS schools but um, overall if you had to pick one um, I, I would say I guess what Aslan if you had to pick one position defensive end you, they had they had nine sacks the whole season and three from defensive ends so that's where I'd say the the biggest improvement has to happen but it's it's all up and down the roster on that side of the ball. All right, gentlemen. I guess it was it was just difficult or, or different to watch Florida State because at times I didn't think anybody was faster in the league than your linebackers. And obviously, you have uh, not only running backs, but your wide receivers at times could catch anything within a ten foot radius. It seems. Uh, best of luck next year, and I look forward to uh, uh, seeing you in Tallahassee, gentlemen. Thanks nice. for the show. Thank you, man. Go, uh, go Irish, I guess, huh? All right. Good, good luck against yeah. Bama. I mean, <laughs> receivers were catching anything. In I, I think, I think he meant he might have either meant Tamari and Terry because he had a nice game in that game, or he might have meant just like basically that was like a, a WTF happened to Florida State type call. Like, what? Why do they? Why do they look like this now? Uh, may, might have been like you know. I remember back in the day when Florida State's receivers caught everything. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the PK Sam ain't walking through that door. Yeah. Grafonza Thorpe, man. Yeah, Grafonza Thorpe isn't walking through that door. Yeah. Um. Well, look at this, Stephen Hel Helgemo. All right, man. I'm glad we hung on for a little while longer. <laughs> Throw hundred bucks. Let's go. Straight cash, homie. $100. Appreciate you, Steven. Just want to say thanks for all we do. It's our job. Thanks, man. Steven with a PH. Thank you, buddy. We appreciate that very much, man. That's very, very nice. Uh, happy New Year. Uh, happy holidays to you and yours. Um, all you guys are way too nice. You're way too nice. All of you guys. Even the ones that are just watching, you're, you're too nice. We just, we love everyone. What do you? Well, most, most everybody. Sure. Even the Notre Dame guys. We even like Notre Dame dudes from Iowa. We don't care. We have love to spread. Notre Dame guy from Iowa right. listening to the program. How about that? Didn't we just have a, a, a comment from someone in Australia? Australia. Yeah, Australia. Sally Glover. Sally Glover down there. She's, I think she's in Queensland. Queensland. Maybe Sydney. I don't know. Yeah. Isn't it crazy that Sally Glover is like 18 hours ahead of us or whatever it is? Yeah. 
24? Is it a full 24? No, it's it's like it's like 18 or so. I think when I was uh yeah, but it's 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 obviously uh it's like the afternoon of of December 31st over there, right? Uh she might be at a New Year's Eve party right now. She might be. I'm trying to find out. Going to Google. I got a pen in my mouth. If you're listening to podcasts, I'm sorry. Um I'm just going to have them do it. It's 11, 10 in the morning on New Year's Eve right now in Sydney, Australia. That's crazy. So that's 60. Yeah, so she's probably already at the New Year's Eve party. Drinking so, mimosas, maybe, yeah. maybe Bloody Mary. Yeah, everybody, you got this projected on the big screen outside. Everybody's watching this, getting ready uh, to hit noon and then really start the party. But thank you very much for uh, listening and watching, Sally. That's That's crazy that somebody in Australia is watching this. All right, let's all go watch the University of Florida lose and hopefully lose in magnificent fashion uh, to end the year and give us something to uh, springboard into brighter days ahead in 2021. Um, I need to thank everybody who donated, but right now my uh, YouTube is not functioning the way I need it to. Corey, say something uh, profound while I uh, figure out how to do my job better. Um, ooh, that's, that's a hard one. I mean, just... Well, not too profound, but you know, just stall for me. Okay, I'll try. Uh, I want you to. I hope everybody has a great New Year, uh, New Year's Eve too. Um, let's let's be healthy. Let's keep it healthy. Let's get through this. The vaccinations are coming slowly but surely. They're making their way to the people that need them the most right now, and then we'll we'll all get them here eventually, hopefully. And uh, um, hopefully by this time next year, right at this time, we'll be where will we be? Aslan, probably Miami, maybe for the Orange Bowl. I, wonder, I really want to go to Phoenix. I've never been to Phoenix in my life. I want to go to the Fiesta Bowl. I've never been to Phoenix. I think Phoenix and myself, Scottsdale area, I think we really would agree with each other. Uh, I don't know if that's where a playoff is going to be, but I, I want to be out there. But I'm like, hey, I'll take Miami. If, you, if we have to go to, say, the Fountain Blue, twist yeah. my arm, I'll do it. Yeah, either way, um, uh, Aslan forgot to mention he's moving to Bucknuts to cover Ohio State. So that's why he'll be <laughs> – that's why he'll be able to be at the Fiesta Bowl next year. Um, but, yeah, just, again, we, we are very, very uh, grateful that this this show has seemingly taken off. Um, didn't didn't know it was going to happen, didn't expect it to happen, but uh, we're really, really excited that it has. And it's a cool community to be a part of. Thank you to Stephen Helgemo, Matthew Cash, Ray Pereira, Premier Youth Theater, Ed Lemmix, Mark Adams. And Courtney, and Courtney Lemmix. Yeah, yeah. Uh, James B., Redbeard, Kevin Saldana, In the Win 2. Uh, we appreciate all of you folks throwing tips our way throughout the year. The thumbs up, super cool. Subscribe to the podcast, tell a friend, five-star review on iTunes, and do stay connected to warchant.com. We'll be cranking out some content, trying to keep us over uh, while basketball season's going, but uh, obviously football is what a lot of you folks care about. We will be talking about that in thorough detail. Hopefully some more folks We'll be joining uh, what Mike Norville is trying to build. Michael Langston will have us covered on that. Hey, Corey, have yourself a, a happy, uh, merry, healthy New Year. I'll, hopefully I'll see you once the, the clock strikes 12 and we'll play tennis or pickleball. Probably not right at 12. But, yeah, man, I'll be down there at some point, and we're going to have a grand old time, man. I can't wait to see you again. There we go. Thanks, everybody. Have a great one.